In this video, we're going to be going over the information that is on pages Excel 14 and 15, which is talking about switching between the worksheet views. Now, you can change your view of the worksheet window at any time. You can use either the View tab on the ribbon or the View buttons on the status bar. Changing your view does not affect the contents of a worksheet. It just makes it easier for you to focus on the different tasks, such as entering uh, content or preparing a worksheet for printing. The View tab includes a variety of viewing options, such as the View buttons, Zoom controls, and the ability to show or hide worksheet elements, such as grid lines. The status bar offers few view options uh, on there, which we see down here, but those can be very convenient to use uh, on there. So let's take a look at step one now. And step one tells us that we're going to click on our view tab. So we're not really changing any more information right now. We're just going to change how it looks uh, on our screen. And when we click on the view tab, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the page layout view button. So right here in the workbook views group, we're going to click on the page layout view. And this, you'll notice that the view switches from the default view, which is the normal, to the page layout view. Now the view that we've been on this entire time shows, a, shows the worksheet without including certain details like headers and footers, or tools like rulers and page number indicators, and which is really great for creating and editing a worksheet but it may not be detailed enough when you want to put the finishing touches on a document. That's why we take a look at the page layout view, which provides a more accurate view of how a worksheet will look when it's printed. Now, the margins in this case of the page are going to be displayed, along with a text box for the header. A footer text box will appear at the bottom of the page, but your screen may not be um, big enough or large enough to view it without scrolling. Above and to the left of the pages are rulers. So we see the rulers right here. And of course, here's our text box for our header in which notice that there's three of them there. And if we scroll down, there's the ones for our footers. Now, of course, next we have part of an additional page will appear over here to the right uh, of the current page that we have, but it's dimmed out, which means that it's indicating that it doesn't contain any data. Of course, the page number uh, indicator on the status bar tells us the current page that we're looking at and the total number of pages in a worksheet. So we can see that if we would print this out, we're only looking at printing one page. But we can scroll down and see there's lots of pages that we could possibly have. Uh, but uh, it will only print pages that have information. Next, it's going to tell us to drag our pointer over the header here without clicking. And notice that this header, as we've seen before, is made up of three different boxes. Step three tells us that we want to click on the left header text box. So we're going to click on this text box right here. And uh, after that, we're going to type in Quest Specialty Travel. Then we're going to click on our center text box. And we're going to type in Tour Guide Payroll Calculator. And then we're going to go to the right header text box, and we're going to type in week 32. Now, if you haven't noticed it, that's the same information that we put up here that is in our spreadsheet. So technically, we could get rid of that because all the information is now up in the header. But now we have the new text in all three of our text boxes. Next, it tells us that we're going to select the range A1, which is right here, down to G2. And remember how I told you that all that information can be deleted? Well, that's what we're going to do. Once you have this information selected, you can clear the contents uh, on there just by hitting your delete. Now, notice it doesn't delete the cells, which would move uh, the cells here up and over or anything like that. What it does is it just clears the content. On step five, we're going to click on the ruler checkbox in the show hide group on the view tab. So if we click on this, notice that the ruler is going to either appear or disappear. And when it's deselected like this, the rulers and the grid lines are hidden 
uh, of course, uh, that's when you click on the rulers. If we click on the grid lines, notice that the grid lines are hidden as well. Now just remember that the grid lines will not uh, print on there unless you tell it to print. Uh, so when usually it comes out, it's going to look roughly like this. Now step six tells us that we're going to click on the page break preview button, which is the third button here in our workbooks, uh, workbooks view. When we click on that, of course it tells us welcome to page break preview. You can adjust where the page breaks are by clicking and dragging them with your mouse. So if you see that, we can just go ahead and click on OK. And this is exactly where our page breaks are at. And as it said on there that we can click on this and drag these over to adjust where our print area is at or our page break is going to be at. Now this is going to display ultimately a reduced view of each page of the worksheet. And since we only have one, that's all we're going to see. This also shows us the page break indicators, which are the blue lines that you can drag to include more or less information on your page. On step seven, it tells us that we're going to drag this bottom indicator down to the bottom of row 21. And if you notice that right now, we're at the bottom of row 18. To move this, we just click on this and we drag it down. There's 19, 20, and 21. So we're going to move those down three areas. And you'll notice that it made our white area here, or this page, a little bit bigger. And of course, when you're working with a on a large worksheet with multiple pages, sometimes you want to adjust where those page breaks are at. And so in this case, or in this worksheet, however, all the information fits comfortably on one foot page, so we don't really have to worry about it too much. On step eight, it tells us that we want to click the view tab if necessary, so hopefully you still have the view tab up here, and we're going to click on the page layout button here back in the workbook view. And when we click on that, we're also going to show the rulers again, as well as the grid lines. And so that you'll notice that the ruler and the grid lines have reappeared in our worksheet. Once you have that, just go ahead and save uh, your spreadsheet here. Of course, a couple tips that's on the page as well, on page 14. It says that although a worksheet can contain more than a million rows and columns, the current document that we have contains only as many pages necessary for our project. And of course you can also change the header and footer information as we were up here uh, using the header and footer design tab that opens up when we have our header and footer active. So if we would click on this, notice we have a new tab and there's our design tab and we can add in some different elements there such as the current date, uh, time, uh, file pass, pictures, and so on. And also, another quick tip, once you're, you view a worksheet in the page break view, preview, the page break indicator appears as a dotted line when you switch back to normal view. So if we go back to the views here and click on uh, normal, notice that here's the dotted line and that tells us where our page break is at. So we are now completed with this video. Uh, you can move on to the final video, which is going to be choosing print options.